Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting morning hair, morning mug, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Cabernet. And if you enjoy this video, I do encourage you to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like, you can also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, deep yellow, Mars black, and chrome orange. Of course, you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round brush and I have a number three round brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. Of course, you can switch those up too. You'll probably, if you're painting along with me, want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources to help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same paint and brushes and all that good stuff. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're doing an initial sketch for an outline of our cup, our saucer, and our head. So I'm going to give you a couple of places to make some dots and we'll connect the dots and hopefully by the time we're done with that, we'll have something that is in a decent enough shape to do what we needed to do. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go about halfway up my canvas into about the center of my canvas and make myself a little bit of a mark. Then I'm going to come down maybe about an inch, inch and a half, make myself another mark. I'm going to go about halfway between these two and ride over to the right and go somewhere maybe three and a half inches away from the edge of my canvas, make myself another mark. And I'm going to do the same thing over on the left hand side. And they don't have to be exactly the same distance from the edge of the canvas. Sometimes when you off center something, it makes it look a little bit more realistic and fun. And then I'm going to connect these four marks with an oval. So I'm going to take this. I can do something like this and I'm just sketching this. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make yourself some kind of oval. This is going to be where our coffee is going to reside. So we want to do something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the bottom of my canvas. Maybe come in a couple of inches and just go straight down. You can make yourself a couple of markers, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch away from the bottom of the canvas and you can just connect those two markers, something like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make the sides of our coffee mug or tea mug or whatever, cocoa mug, whatever kind of mug you want to call it. Me, it's coffee because I live on coffee. <laughs> so I'm going to connect this outer edge to here and for me I'm going to kind of come almost straight down for a little while and then I'll give it a little bit of a curve. So something like this, bring it down and then just curve it and make it meet in somewhere like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side, but I'm not terribly concerned if it's exactly the same. I wanted a similar shape, but we're not going for photorealism here. We're just going for a fun painting. So something like this, maybe bubble it a little bit and then just come down and curve it down to here. So something like that. And you can always modify it as we paint it in. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my head. So I'm going to come about half the distance between the top of my mug and the top of my canvas, make myself a little bit of a marker in through there. Then I'm going to come in maybe about an inch and a half to two inches on each one of these sides, make myself a couple of markers, and I'm going to connect these with a big oval. So something like this or the top of an oval, I should say, because this is gonna just be the top of the head. And for me, I'm making this kind of like what I look like in the morning. <laughs> so I'm putting a bun on the top of the head. So I'm gonna do another mark between here and here. So maybe about halfway up, make myself another mark. And then I'm just gonna make myself some kind of bun type circle-y thing somewhere up in through here. And then we need to do ourselves a little bit of a saucer down below. So all I'm really going to do is I'm going to come up about an inch from the bottom left in through here. And I'm going to connect this to the side of my canvas, maybe about an inch up from the bottom with a little bit of a curve. Then I'm going to do an imaginary line straight across like this da, 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 and go at the same point and do the same thing over on this side. Just make myself some kind of a curved line and that is all we're gonna do for our outline. We're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our wall. I'm gonna be using my big brush. The colors I'm using are brown, yellow, and white. So it's just like a creamy kind of brownish yellowy wall. I'm doing this color because it's kind of like the color of one of my walls in my house. But, and in my head, I'm thinking that yes, this painting is so much like me. <laughs> so I might as well paint the wall like me. If you want to paint your wall, whatever color is in your house or whatever color you want, feel free to do so. How I'm going to do it though, is I'm going to have the top a little bit darker than the bottom. So I'm starting with all three colors on my brush, brown, yellow, and white, all on my brush at the same time. And I'm just going to be going left to right. You are going to find though, that when you get towards the head and the cup and stuff that you're clearly going to have them in your way. So it's, you don't want to necessarily look like you're painting around those objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bump into them. And then as I paint them later, I'll be able to clean up those edges. So I'm using a left to right brush stroke. Maybe you want to use a different kind of brush stroke, totally up to you. But this left to right brush stroke is going to help me to get a, gr a natural gradient as I go down. And again, we're not going for photorealism here. So if you want yours, oh my canvas is making a little bit of noise today. Um, if you want to make yours a little bit different, feel free to do so. You could have a solid color wall. I just want mine to look like maybe, I don't know, it's get, you know, the top is darker because it's getting closer to the ceiling or something. You can, you know, again, imagine it whatever way you want it to be. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. It's going a little bit too light on me, a little bit too fast, so I just picked up more yellow and brown. And you want to try and get the left side of the color to look pretty similar to the right side, but if one side ends up a little bit lighter or darker than the other side, it's okay because maybe it'll just look like there's a light on or something in the house. So you can, of course, feel free to get it into whatever tonal range you would like. And again, I'm just kind of doing a little section and popping over onto the other side so I can make sure that color is pretty similar on the other side. And as I'm coming down, I'm gonna start using more white so it gets lighter and lighter as it comes down to the bottom and it'll probably be almost white for me as I get down towards that very bottom bottom. And if you run into your pencil and it starts kind of bleeding into your paint, don't worry about it. Just paint it in. It's It'll just make it look a little bit more natural. So don't worry if that, that happens. And again, I, sometimes you'll notice I go back up into the previous paint. That helps for me to get a nice gradient and again, it doesn't have to be super duper perfect here. We're just going for a fun, a fun painting. So I'm just bringing my lighter color down here on the left hand side. Going to do the same thing over here on the right hand side. And again, I'm just using more white as I'm coming down that canvas. And you can, of course, 
adjust your color to whatever color you want and you can see I am bumping into my my mug I bumped into my my head you can that just helps to make it look more finished along those particular objects so once I've got this all nice and painted what you can do if you want it to look a little bit more smoother and more grady gradiated you can always move your brush up and down like this if your paint is still wet that will help to kind of smooth out that gradient a little bit but it's totally up to you and then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step so once you have your wall all nice and painted on here you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the base coat for the liquid in our cup so for me it's coffee totally coffee all day long when i wake up when i go to sleep when i have lunch when i have a snack sometimes even by my bedside so coffee all day long for me you maybe yours is cocoa or tea or i don't know milk whatever you want to do i'm doing coffee <laughs> so i've got my big brush i'm going to be using brown and black but I'm going to be using very little bit of paint. So I'm going to have mine a little bit lighter over on this right side. So I'm going to start with brown over here and I'll get it a little bit blacker over here. If you see streaks in it, don't worry. That's We've got other stuff to do on it. I'm going to be doing this entire section except for a little sliver at uh, near the top that I'm not going to paint because that's going to be the edge of my mug. So I'm going to start with a little bit of brown on my brush and I'm going to come over here onto the left hand side and you can see I don't have much paint and I'm just kind of brushing it in so it's nice and thin and I'm going to bring it all the way over to this corner but again I'm leaving that little bit of a sliver towards the top unpainted and now that I've got this right hand side and I'm painting right into my pencil mark in through here now that I've got this right hand side I'm going to pick up brown with a touch of black and I'm going to go ahead and finish up this edge part right here so I'm really just riding my brush along in a similar arc that I have for the top of my cup and I'm going to bring it down into this little corner here and then I'm just for me going to use the remnants on my brush you might need to pick up more paint on your end but I'm just going to use the remnants on my brush to finish painting this in and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step but you're going to want to wash it and dry it so once you've got your your base coat for your liquid on there you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the base coat for our mug and our saucer. I'm using my large brush and I'm using orange paint because you probably guessed one of my favorite coffee cups is orange. <laughs> you could totally do yours whatever color you want. So I, whatever color you do choose to do, just do, you're gonna paint the entire thing in that color. So I know that the orange paint that I'm gonna be using is see-through, so I will be able to see my pencil mark underneath my paint. So I am just gonna be able to paint over these two things with the same orange I'll still be able to see my outline for later painting but if you're using a different color you might want to um, maybe outline that with a dark color or something but you can see as soon as I start painting over it I can see through my orange there is no fancy brush stroke needed for this you just want to get the entire mug and saucer painted with whatever base coat you've chosen I'm gonna go right up to the edge of my saucer or my plate whatever or my table maybe this is a table hmm could totally paint it as a table whatever you want use your imagination this is definitely one of those funner paintings that does not need to be exact and it can be representational of whatever you want it to be maybe you've got you know a cool little cafe table or something that's made that's black or you know is made of some funky tile or something or you know have, have fun um so i know that the only tricky area is going to be this little 
edge around here. So I'm just going to go slow. If you need to, you could certainly whip out a smaller brush to get this in here. But don't worry if you bump into your, your liquid or if you bump into your face. We'll be able to correct it later. No big deal. So I'm just going a little bit slow as I go here. And if your coffee mug grows a little bit, that's okay. And then just coming right into this little corner here. And then I'm just painting the whole thing in. This is going to be my nice base coat. If you are going into your wall and finding that your paint is still wet on your wall, that's okay too. Just paint it on in. The paint was will definitely just take on a little bit different hue if you're going through another area of wet paint, but we'll just roll with it. Just roll with it. And then I'm gonna go ahead, do this little corner over here. You can do this in any order that you want as you're going through this process. So you maybe you do the whole, the whole big area down below first and then come up here with a smaller brush or if you can work with a big brush like this, you can certainly just ride along that little edge. And then I'm going to go all the way down here. And then once I've got this on, I might uh, go a little bit slower too when I do the, the top edge of the mug. And again, no special brush stroke, just get it on here and it's going to end up looking streaky. It's going to end up looking not finished after this step because it's not finished after this step. So don't worry if yours isn't, you know, exhibit worthy once you get this done. We are just putting on our base coat, which makes the future steps nice and easy. And again, maybe this is whatever kind of cup you want it to be. Mine is just a big, huge coffee cup. And then we are going to be switching to our Let's switch brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this base coat on your cup, you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our face skin. <laughs> so how I'm gonna do this is I'm using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are orange, brown and white and I am going to pre-mix myself a skin color. So for me, I'm going for this as kind of a funny self-portrait kind of thing. <laughs> so I'm going to be inspired by my own skin color. If you want to make yours similar to mine, you can certainly do the same skin color that I'm doing or you can use your own skin as inspiration. Whatever you want to do is totally fine. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take I've already got myself a little bit pre-mixed so you can see where I'm headed with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my white. I'm going to take a little bit of orange and a little bit of brown and I'm just going to start spinning it together. So I might nail it right on the first shot. I might have to adjust it. If I want it more pinky, I could add more of the orange. If I want it more brown, I could add more of the brown. If I want it more yellow, I add more yellow, or I can add yellow to it. So you just really make it whatever tone, lightness, or darkness that you would like. And how I kind of test it out, I know it's gonna turn a little darker as it dries. So how I end up testing it to see if it's similar to what I want or my skin tone, literally what I do is I take my paintbrush and I put it up to my skin. <laughs> so to me, I know that it's gonna turn a little bit darker as it dries. So I'm, I'm pretty cool with this, this tone. And then once you've got the color that you want, you're just gonna paint this whole portion, this whole uh, semi oval part of this oval all the way up to the top. And the reason why I'm painting the whole thing is because I want pops or little peekaboo spots through my hair where you'll be able to see like the skin on my cheek or the skin on my forehead. So I paint the whole area with the skin tone first. And then as I'm painting the hair, you'll have little peek throughs of the skin. And I'm gonna just paint the whole, the entire area all the way down to my cup. There's no special brush stroke. 
you just want to have a nice coat on there and if you want you can do two layers or just a nice thick first layer whatever whatever works for you is totally fine by me and then let's see what are we going to do for the next step we are going to be using our large brush for the next step so once you've got this skin on your head or on your face you can put this medium brush away take out your large brush get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the shadow on our cup and our saucer so i'm going to be using my large brush i'm going to be using black brown and orange um, but before you start this step, I do want to forewarn you that you do want to have these two objects dry and yours might already be dry by now, but if it's not, you know, you could just take a little bit extra of a break if you want to, or you could blow on it, or you could just take out a fancy dancy blow dryer and blow dry it. So whatever method you need to do to get it to be dry, just go for it. <laughs> so how I'm going to do this is in my head my light source is coming from this from the left hand side so i'm going to have the left hand side over here really bright which we'll do later but for now i know that i need the bottom and the right side of my mug to be darker and a little bit here to be darker because my cup is kind of tipped in so i'm going to have a little bit of a shadow here I will have a big shadow over on this side, a little bit underneath to tell the viewer that the mug goes in. And then I'm going to have a shadow underneath my mug and to the bottom right. So this is a less is more kind of step. You really don't need a lot of paint. The less paint you have on your brush, the more control you'll have over the situation. So I'm going to start with a teeny tiny bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna tackle my shadow on my mug first. So I'm just putting a little bit of black and brown and I feel like I have a lot of paint on my brush so I'm going to definitely wipe it off on my paper towel. I don't want or need a lot of paint. So I'm gonna, now that I've got it on there, I'm almost gonna dry brush it out to the right hand side. I want there to be an evident shape to my mug at the bottom. So I bring the shadow up a little bit and then I'm going to just with whatever remnants are on my brush, pull this shadow out towards that right hand side. And you can have a really long shadow, you, you know, it's totally up to you. The The length of it will, de will tell the viewer how close or far away that light source is. And then we'll, I'm going to go into my mug. So I'm going to, again, reload my brush with black and brown. I'm going to start on this right hand side. And again, I don't need much paint. So you can always add more. It's really tough to take away once it's on there. And I'm going to start up this right hand side, go all the way to the edge of my mug. I don't want to lose the edge of my, the bottom of my mug. So I'm not going to make that as dark as the shadow underneath it. So when you get to that area, just make sure you can still see a little bit of that, that orange underneath it. And then what I'm going to do as I travel up this right hand side, I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange and brown, and that's going to help me to get the shadow to almost blend into the actual cup itself or the, the main body area of the cup. And I'm bringing the shadow all the way to the edge. And I think I want it just a teeny bit darker over here. So I just picked up a, a little bit more black, but I, I am very cautious about the quantity of paint that I have on my brush. When I start adding the orange to my brush, you can use a lot of orange. It's that black and the brown that you really want to kind of be cautious with. And once I've got the orange on my brush, I can use that orange to just get these to blend in to the main area. And it, again, no need to make it look like a photograph. We're just really giving our, ourselves a fun, a fun mug here that's a little bit darker over on the right hand side. So this is, I am using kind of a directional type brush stroke. And I want this darkness to fade into this main body, but I don't need to go all the way 
over to the left hand side with my orange just yet so just getting this on here i want a little bit of a shadow coming up this left hand side but i don't want it to go as far up as i did on the right so i'm just gonna i didn't wash my brush i have the orange on there i'm just adding a little bit of brown to the area and you might want oops went right into my wall it's okay it might be a good place for one of my fingers to go um, you might want to add a touch of black totally up to you how intense you want this little section of a shadow to go down here. But once you have it in the area that you want, just wipe your brush off on your paper towel, pick up a little bit of the orange and get that shadow to blend in with the main area of that mug. I think I want a little bit darker down here in this bottom left hand corner. So picking up a touch of black and orange just to make sure that I've got a nice shadow down here too to give that viewer the information of the shape oops almost just dropped my palette the shape of the object and again you don't have to go full on and paint the entire mug at this point um, because we're going to be doing a highlight in a minute which will finish painting the mug for us and let's see where else do I need a shadow maybe a little bit of a shadow in here just going to put a touch of brown on my brush with that orange and put a little bit of a shadow in through my mug in the in the inside of it right in through here and then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step so once you've got your shadow on your mug and your saucer you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what i'm going to do for the next step is i'm doing the first layer of my facial features. So I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using brown and white. And again, you can have this whatever way you want. Your eyebrows can be different than mine. Your eyes themselves can be different than mine. Obviously, my mug is the mug that I dream of and it's much larger than my head. <laughs> so my eyes, it's really way out of proportion on purpose. It's just a fun, you know, dreamlike painting for me. <laughs> so um, typically, if you're going for a realistic kind of proportion on your eyes and stuff, you know, you're going to want them not too far away from the edge of the head and then you just need a little space in between them for for your nose they're pretty close together on the inside edges and the outside and my eyes are kind of closed because maybe i haven't fully woken up yet so you can't even see my eye color or anything i'm just going for some eyelids and some eyebrows <laughs> so i'm going to put a little bit of brown paint on my brush and i'm going to make myself almost just the outline of my eyelids. So I'm gonna leave my, myself maybe about an inch space in the middle of my can, or the middle of my head, and just make myself kind of like the top part of an oval, something like that, and something like that. And then I'm gonna make myself a couple of eyebrows. And again, have fun with this. This is just a playful, painting. We will be adding some additional colors on top of this in a little bit, but right now just have fun. Maybe you want some big, huge eyebrows. Maybe you want some really, you know, manicured eyebrows. Whatever you'd like is totally fine. So I've done that with brown and now I'm going to add brown and white to my brush because I want the eyelid to be a little bit different color than the actual skin so i just did brown maybe a little bit more white here brown and white so it's a little bit different color than the skin and the eyebrows themselves and that little crease of my um, top eyelid and we're going to add eyelashes and i'm going to have some black eyebrows or some darker eyebrows too but right now I'm just adding a different color for my eyelids and we are going to use the same brush for the next step so once you have your first step to your facial features on here you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our hair. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using brown and black paint because once upon a time, I had darker hair. <laughs> so not only is this a, I dream of this cup, but I dream of the color of hair I once had. <laughs> so I'm going a little bit darker on this one than my hair is actually, but yet it's still gonna look kind of look like what I look like in the morning. <laughs> so I am going to uh, start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. So I'm gonna use the darker of the two colors to give myself kind of a roadmap of where I want the edges of the hair to go and maybe a little bit of dimension for the bun. So I've got black and brown on my hair, um, on my hair, <laughs> on my brush, and I'm gonna put kind of like a little part over here and then I'm just gonna kind of squiggle some messy curly pieces down this side in through here and then maybe I'll do the same on this side. I'm not gonna have any ears showing I'm just really giving myself a messy morning look here. And now that I've got that kind of outline, I'm reloading with black and brown to start the bottom of my bun on with the darker color. So that way it will give it a little bit of dimension. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start picking up brown. So now that I've got kind of my part and where the edges of my hair are going to go. I've got just brown on my brush. I didn't wash my brush and I'm going for a really messy, carefree, I haven't brushed my, my hair yet. Well, I don't ever brush my hair, but I haven't made it, you know, put it in any kind of order. This is just, I, I woke up. So for me, I've got curly hair. So I'm just going to kind of do some really fun flipping out kind of pieces. You can certainly do yours however thick or thin you want. This is just the first layer. I will be doing a highlight and shadow kind of layer in a little bit, but for me this is just going to kind of set the, set the stage for where I want my hair and if I want it to be curly or straight. Definitely for me I've got some flyaway pieces all over the place. So I am just having a whole bunch of fun. When I get to the bun, I'll probably make that extend a little bit further as well. But right now I'm just kind of putting in the first coat and you can see, I still can see some of my skin underneath. That's gonna really help to make this look, I was gonna say more natural, but there's nothing natural about this. More um, dimensional, we'll give it a dimensional word here. And maybe I don't have as many flyaways on that side. Maybe, maybe I have some longer pieces coming. Maybe I've got a couple that are on the other side of my cup, just kind of curling out the side there. So have fun. One thing, you know, with acrylic paint, it is gonna be kind of on the, on the streakier kind of see-through type side. That's why we're gonna do two layers to this. Uh, but this really just kind of helps to set the stage. Maybe this is gonna come down further in through here. I'm gonna do my bun now. So again, I'm still just using brown paint at this point. I think I want my bun a little bit wider. So I'll bring this out just a little bit further. And again, you can totally have yours whatever way you want to because I have curly hair I can kind of wiggle my brush around to give myself the illusion of some little curls or something in there and then of course there's stray pieces because have you seen my hair lately <laughs> there's always stray pieces everywhere so we'll just kind of flick some here and there and everywhere. And then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your morning hair <laughs> on your painting, you can put this medium brush away, grab your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we are adding the highlight to our mug and our saucer and also finishing the, the main coat of it. So how I'm gonna do this, I'll use my large brush. I'm going to be using white, yellow, 
and orange. And if I need to go into brown, I will, but to make it blend, but I think, I think I'll be safe with white, yellow, and orange. So my light source is over here on the left-hand side, as we talked about earlier. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm putting yellow and white on my brush at the same time. I want this highlight to kind of come around this corner and then it's gonna occupy a real big space at the top left of this cup. So I'm gonna just kind of get it up here in this top left hand, just along the, the little edge of that cup. And then I'm gonna bring it around this corner and then it's gonna reside just below the edge of, um, or kind of into the edge of the mug going in through this area and then I'm going to bring it down this left hand side so again I'm just got yellow and white on my brush at the moment I'm putting these highlighted areas in here and then what I want to do is kind of pull it and blend it towards the right hand side so I'm just going to take it as it's still wet and start blending it into the neighboring orange. And I think I want this to be a little bit more intense here, so I just picked up a little bit more yellow onto my brush, so just making sure that this is bright enough over here on this left-hand side. I'm gonna pick up some orange now to get this to blend into the main area of the, of the cup. And I might make this a little bit brighter in a second here, but First, before this paint dries on me too much, I wanna make sure that I have it nice and blended with the rest. Right now, I'm just picking up orange to get a nice second coat on here and to make sure that I've got it fully blended into the darker side of the mug. And you can do that just as the paint is drying. I wanna make sure that I've got a nice layer here and the, the highlight along the rim could travel a little bit further than this halfway point so you can certainly just pull that on over. And I do think I want this top left hand a little bit lighter so I'm going to wash and dry my brush real quick and add a bit more white into that area just to pop it out and make sure it is definitely bright enough for, for my taste. So I just added a little bit more white in through here and then I'm going to wipe my my brush off on my paper towel and then just lightly get this to blend in with those neighboring colors and then I'm going to do the same thing along the edge of my saucer so it too shows that there is a highlighted area and it's being lit up by by something a nice morning kitchen lamp or something maybe i'll bring a little bit of this down here and you can play with the intensity of this maybe you want yours brighter or darker than mine totally up to you and then i'm going to put some of that yellow and white on my brush to get this edge of my saucer nice and light so just kind of riding that along the edge of my saucer, my pencil showing through, so I just added a bit more white. White will definitely help to hide any pencil marks. I'm gonna put a little bit of this over here on the right hand side too. Maybe not as much on the right hand side, seeing as that might be a little bit more in the shadowed side of the saucer. So I just have the remnants of the yellow and white on my brush right now. I'm gonna pick up orange in a second here to get it to blend into the main area. Wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a little bit of orange to make sure that this saucer gets blended into that highlighted area. And again, could be a saucer, could be a table, whatever you're imagining it to be, it totally is fine. And then I'm gonna make sure I have a nice second coat over here to make sure that this table, or the now I'm calling it a table, <laughs> the saucer is fully done. And then we are gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlight on your cup and your saucer, you can put the large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our hairy things. <laughs> so <laughs> this is gonna be the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and the hair. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using black, yellow, white, and brown. So I'm just gonna tackle my, my facial features first. I'm gonna use a little bit of black 
and brown. And really what I'm gonna do is I just want a couple of darker pieces of eyelashes and eyebrows on here. So I'm really just kind of wisping in a couple of black pieces, uh, black and brown. But you could, again, use yourself as inspiration or use this, you know, use this one that I'm doing as inspiration and create your own fun character if you want to. And I'm gonna put some really long eyelashes up on the sides because I always wished that I had really long eyelashes. <laughs> so again, maybe this is, I call, I jokingly said it was a, a self portrait, but maybe it's just really what I wish I had. <laughs> um, so you can really have fun with this and make it whatever you want it to be. We'll have some really big, long eyelashes over here on the left and the right, and they can overlap each other. They can come up from underneath the, you know, from inside, not inside the mug, but on the other side of the mug, you could put light ones and dark ones and whatever you want, really long ones, you know, little wispy ones, just have fun with it. And then I'm gonna kind of do the same thing for the hair. Um, I'm really putting like a second layer on here, but I wanna make sure that I've got maybe some shadowy type areas underneath the hairline. I'm, I will put a little bit more of a shadow along the, the forehead in a minute here, but right now I'm just kind of finishing the hair. So maybe some more black streaks in here. Again, that color that I wish I really still had, but again, you can really have as much fun with this as you want. Some more, some more curly pieces. I'm going to you know, maybe stay a little true to myself and put a couple of beautiful gray hairs in there as well, but you can really put whatever you want. This is just kind of a, a second layer, making sure that I have enough hair on here, uh, maybe some little darker pieces in the center of my bun. Now, I do kind of want some little golden pieces of hair. I washed and dried my brush, so I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow and brown on my brush and maybe put a couple of little golden pieces coming out the side. So again, just have fun with this. I'm just playing with the colors. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my brush to put some little highlights here and there so you can do them in the same direction as the other you know, hair, or you can have fun and put some more flyaway pieces if you want. It's your painting. You can really have fun with it if you want to, you know, put some gray hair in there, which I probably should if I was doing this totally as a self-portrait. Um, you could use some black and white on there, but again, just this is all about having fun. You make yours as freeing and as fluffy and as whatever you want it to be as as you want it to be. And then we are going to be using the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful hair on here, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our fingers. So I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna use my skin color. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have just the little tips of the fingers on both sides of the mug. I'm gonna have them in positioned a little bit different. This side's gonna be a little bit higher and this side's gonna be a little bit lower. I'm gonna have the four fingers, not the thumb showing. And I'm gonna do a series of ovals that are gonna be kind of partially on the mug and partially in the, the on the wall so you'll probably be able to see this line through it don't worry because this is just the first layer think of this as like the primer coat so when you when you're done painting and you say oh my god i can still see the mug under there don't worry about it and how i'm going to do this so it kind of resembles the natural hand is i'm going to have the ovals for each fingertip get progressively a little bit smaller as they come down. So the top ones will be a little bit bigger and then or longer, and then they'll get a little bit smaller as they go down. So here we go. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come up maybe about two and a half, three inches on the left hand side, 
and this one's gonna be come in something like this and they can be at different angles they don't all have to be the same exact angle it's gonna be one they can touch each other a little bit if you want them to so this will be my second one I'm gonna have four so that's two maybe my third one is in through here and they don't have to be very big this is just little fingertips that we're showing here's my my fourth one and then I'm gonna go over onto the left side and do four more so I've got my top one that's gonna be the biggest and maybe come out a little bit so something like this and maybe one hand we see more of it than the other maybe you know so just again have fun maybe this one is tipped a little bit differently I'm just going to have some fun here and make them be in different directions and just have, you know, fun. But I do want that top one to look like it is the biggest. So that's why I did that. And then here's my, my little one here. So this one will be just a little bit smaller. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your fingertips on here, you can wash and dry this small brush get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're adding shadow to her face so I'm really probably just going to do this underneath the hairline but if you have a lot of your face showing you could certainly do it on the edges or wherever you want so what I'm going to do is I'm using my small brush and I'm going to start with a little bit of brown on my brush and what I'll end up doing is picking up, I'm gonna start with brown and then I'll pick up some of my regular skin color to get it to blend in. So just a teeny tiny bit of brown paint. You almost want it like a dry brush kind of technique. And I'm gonna put it along the edge and I'm just really gonna rub it in there. And I feel like I'm getting a pretty good blend right now where I might not even need to go into some of my original skin color, but if you felt like you needed to, you could just pick up a touch of your original skin color and get it to blend into that shadowy area. So that's gonna be a decision, a decision that you're gonna have to make all on your own. But that's looking pretty good for me. Um, maybe just a teeny bit underneath here. And this could be the shadow from the hair, or it could just be a contour shadow for the head going back. So you can certainly have fun with it. If you do want a shadow from the hair, you could always pick up a touch of black, which I didn't say I was going to use, but there we go. I'm using black now. And you could put a teeny tiny bit of black just to show maybe a shadow of a piece of hair or little straggler hairs or something like that. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow on your skin, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the liquid part. We'll do the steam on a different step, but this is gonna just be um, the liquid part itself. So really, I just wanna make sure that I have it reading correctly as we've got a shadow over here and maybe it's a little bit lighter over here. So I'm really kind of just putting a second layer on it. I'm using my small brush. I will be using black, brown, maybe a little white but only if i need to and again if you're doing a different type of liquid you can certainly adjust your colors um, as you need to but i'm going to be using black over here making sure i have a little bit of a darker area in through here as well and then my lightest area is going to be over here so i'm starting with black on my brush making sure that it goes right to the um, edge of my mug you could even if you were doing cocoa you could have a little bit of foam around the edges you know just play it as as you as whatever liquid you would like to be sipping on or to have in this big huge cup of yours so or cup of mine. <laughs> so I just I keep kind of alternating my black and my brown to get this to be almost a nice gradient for me from the dark over to the light. That's going to be too light over there, so I definitely am going to make that a little bit darker, but I want my edges where it's meeting the mug to make sure that it's really pretty dark. doesn't all have to be as dark as it is over here. 
and then you know maybe you like your your coffee with a lot of cream in it so maybe your coffee is lighter than mine you know just to have fun tweaking this whatever way you want it to be just make sure you get right up to the edge and it's fully painted and you have a good representation of whatever liquid that you would like that's looking pretty good to me i've got my dark over here my light over here it's going right up to the edge of my cup so we are going to be using our small brush for the next step so once you've got your liquid all finished you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our mug handle i'm going to be using my small brush and the colors that i'm going to be using are black brown orange yellow and white which are all of the colors on my palette <laughs> so how i'm going to do this is i'm going to do an outline with brown first and then we're we're in essence kind of using the what we already have as the color of our mug for our handle we're just going to give the handle shape and add a highlight and a shadow to it so you'll see how i'm going to do this and we're I've got the mug kind of in, in this position right in through here. I suppose you could have it kind of anywhere, but having it here allows me to take the highlight from over there and give it a little bit of dimension because I can have it kind of on the side. I hope you enjoyed my visual effect here. <laughs> it's a really big handle. So what I'm going to do is if her nose is here, I'm going to go a little bit to the left of the nose or maybe about the center of her eye and come down maybe about a half of an inch to an inch below the mug edge and I'm going to give myself maybe I would say about an inch and a half wide top of like an oval something like that and then what I'm going to do is I am going to come down from the center of her eye I'm going to travel down to a little bit higher than the edge of my my saucer and that's going to be the bottom like right edge of the handle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and make myself a little bit of a curve i'm going to bring it uh, to the left a little bit but i don't want it to go as far as here so maybe right about here now i'm going to connect this to here with a slow arcing kind of line so you might want to I'll, I'll bump it out a little bit from from here just bump it out a little bit but think of this as kind of a really long C um, shape something like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on the inside so I'm going to pull this in here just a little bit and then I'm going to pull this in just a little bit something like that and then I will connect them in a similar type fashion so something like that so that's the basic shape to it now I know that my highlight is over here on the left and the shadow is over on the right so I have brown on my brush I'm gonna pick up a teeny bit of black paint to get this to be really shadowed down here in the bottom right and on the inside edge right in through here so black and brown on my brush then i'm going to pick up some orange without washing my brush to get this to kind of blend in down here and if you feel like you're overloaded just wa wipe your brush off on your paper towel and pick up that orange paint and get this to just kind of blend in so we're putting our shadow on that right hand side bottom right and now since I have let me just oops my paper towel just went in my paint let me just get this to blend in a little bit and through here so just orange paint is getting it to blend in with that black paint black and brown which would be the shadow color so something like that and then what I can do is I'm going to put a highlight over on the left hand side so you could wash your brush if you need to but I'm just gonna wipe mine on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up some orange yellow and white and I don't want to lose the edge of this handle so it's okay if you still see a little bit of that brown over on the left hand side 
And I don't want this to go too, too white because I'm gonna reserve my brightest highlight for up here. So I'm really just lightening the left side of that handle and I'm gonna get it to blend in with that orange in the middle. So something like that will work just fine. Give myself that little bit of a highlight on the left hand side. Now I need to finish up here. So my brightest highlight is gonna be where the where the handle bends right here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white right in through here and wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna blend it into the right with a little bit of yellow to start. And then I'll put, well, right and down, I guess. And then I'll put a little bit of orange to get it to fully almost curve back into the, the mug along that seam where it actually goes into the mug or connects to the mug. So something like this. And again, you can fiddle with this and, and tweak it until you've got enough dimension on it to make you happy. But all I'm really trying to do is get a highlight on the left-hand side to emulate where that light source is coming from and get it to look like it's actually going into the mug or connected to the, the main base of the mug. So it might take you a minute to, to get these colors to just kind of work together. So you just kind of keep tweaking them as you need to. And you can also, if you, if you feel that there's any kind of naked type space or it's not connecting well, you can certainly cast a little bit of a shadow on the actual mug itself. So you, like we did on the face, you could just take a teeny bit of brown paint and put a little bit of a shadow right on that mug right next to the handle. So that's gonna be, you know, something that if you, if you feel that it needs that, feel free to do so. But that's all I'm gonna do for my handle. I just wanted it to look three-dimensional. Uh, we are going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your handle on, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our fingers. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, white, and my original skin color. And if you feel like you want you know, additional stuff, you can certainly use orange too, but my dominant colors are gonna be brown, white, and my skin color. So how I'm gonna do this is I am rolling up my sleeves first, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use a teeny tiny bit of brown paint and I'm gonna outline my fingernails. So again, you can use your own as inspiration. You can make them long or short or whatever you'd like. So I'm just going to not necessarily totally outline, but kind of give the where the nail bed meets the the skin. And you could strategically place these right up if you can on the edge where your where you can see the edge of your mug. So that's going to work out for me on a couple of them, but not on all of them. So like this one, I've got to put a little bit higher. So I'm just kind of putting a light brown line with not a ton of paint. I'm gonna go and do the same thing over on this side. And again, I'm not going for photorealism. I'm just going for a fun painting here. So a little bit of brown to add that dimensional kind of element here for the, for the fingernail. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my original skin color without washing my brush and add a second layer to the finger part and maybe the sides of uh, the where the nail is because I'm gonna do most of my nail lighter. So that way it gives it almost like a three-dimensional kind of look to it. So I'm just doing another layer of skin. You could certainly put wrinkles on here if you wanted to. You could have more shadowy areas in between the fingers, but again, I'm just going for a, a nice, simple representation of, of the finger itself. So um, now I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white on my brush without washing it. And this is where I'm gonna put just like a little bit of a highlight on those 
nails and I do a little bit of a curve and you know wherever you feel that the light source is that's going to be the dominant part of that highlight and now since I have that white part I'm not going to wash my brush I'm just going to pick up more of that skin color just to get it to blend in a little bit if I need to maybe you don't need to maybe yours works just fine the way that it is and really that's kind of all I'm going to do for these I'm, I don't want to labor over them too much I'm painting over my white a little bit too much so I might add a touch more here just picking up a little bit more white so again you could have yours as you know realistic looking as you want or as playful as you want you could I suppose add a shadow underneath them too if you wanted to pop out a little bit more you can take a little bit of brown paint and just underline that bottom side of the fingertip that will make it look like there's a little bit of a shadow under there and if your painting is really dark maybe you could use black for that particular um for this particular shadowy type step or over on this right side maybe you use a little bit of black if you want to do that it's not necessary and then we are going to be using let's see our medium brush for the next step so once you've got your fingers all nice and finished you can put this small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm adding the steam to my beverage. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm just using white paint, but you could certainly use a combination of white and black and brown and make it like a grayish type look, but I'm gonna use white paint and water it down a little bit. And that way I'm gonna have some some see-through spots to it and some non-see-through spots to it. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take my medium brush, I'm gonna take just a drop of water and water down a little bit of my white. You can always add more, um, but I would more paint or thicker paint to your steam marks, but I would suggest starting with a really thin paint to start and then as it dries, you can add more. You're gonna notice when you have water inside wet paint, wet inside white paint, it will look brighter when it's wet, but when it dries, it will be a little bit more translucent. So just mentally prepare for that. And I have my little bit of watered down white paint on my brush, and I'm gonna have some, coming from the center, some really just kind of steamy, little pieces and I want it to blend in with my with my liquid so I'm just wiggling my brush so I have some really almost thick spots you don't necessarily have to use your finger to <laughs> to do this but you can just kind of push that paint along and make it as wiggly as you want um, as striped as you want as powerful as you want make your wiggles look different from one another so have them coming off in a different direction you don't want them to all come off in the same direction because that won't look as natural and you want to have some thicker spots and some thinner spots so that way it looks uh, almost more smoky in in certain areas so just have fun with this you can make it as intense or as non-intense as you want I think I want maybe another wiggly one somewhere in through here and then just work work that paint as as much as you want I want some coming up into the the ceiling or into the wall a little bit and you just kind of keep tweaking it as you want and then we have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to be with your small brush so once you've got your steam percolating out of your cup you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for that final step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of any painting which is to sign it so i usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right you can certainly sign yours wherever you'd like to i'm going to use my small brush i'm going to use black paint and i think i'm going to sign mine on my saucer down here in the bottom left i use my initials but you could certainly use your 
first name or the date or whatever you'd like to do is totally fine by me. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really huge cup of something. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.